Thank you. Thank you very much, Raoul. So, um, welcome everybody to this afternoon's session. The, the title of the symposium is The Polycephalum City. Quite a tongue twister. But uh, Claudia Pasquero, the, the head curator of the Biennale this year, chose the Polycephalum as a, as a title because it indicates many heads with their own views contributing to final investigations and speculative uh, trajectories. And I think that given the complexity of the, uh, the issues that the theme of this year's Biennale has thrown up, it seems entirely appropriate. It's also a very democratic way of proceeding. And uh, that means, although we have quite a long uh, session this afternoon, we have a break uh, after the third speaker. We have four tremendous speakers. The fourth one will be appearing by Skype, but uh, that's better than nothing. <laughs> and uh, to, be, to maintain our democratic integrity, we will allow plenty of time uh, as part of the final round table for questions uh, thoughts and observations from the from from you from the audience I would just make one plea that uh, many of you are coming to the opening of the exhibition uh, after that so uh, if you could make your uh, your observation or your question as as brief and as succinct as possible to to the to the point then we would really appreciate that so um, we have, as you may have noticed from the news, we have currently a planetary socio-ecological crisis. Um, and change and transformation are, are givens. So in today's Anthropocene era, and the Anthropocene, Anthropocene Island is the title of the curated exhibition, the boundaries between the natural and the artificial realms, as Claudia made clear in her talk this morning, uh, realms of life have, uh, you know, they are, they are blurred as never before. And this has triggered, um, on the part of the, the very talented architects and practitioners taking part, artists and scientists, um, a non-anthropocentric approach to um, what is distributive and collaborative urbanism, so a lateral, across sectors, and that's another uh, meaning of the uh, significance of, of the, the term polycephalum. It's distributed and it requires uh, a lot of people coming together. So and they've come together and uh, their, their intellectual and conceptual weight is embodied within the Anthropocene island, which um, I've had a sneak preview of. And it's extremely experiential and uh, full of intrigue and uh, very thought provoking at the same time. But it is really a whole collection of experimental, speculative, and yes, didactic exhibits. Uh, didactic is a word that sometimes we tend to forget about and think that the people were only didactic in urban design or planning after the Second World War or when they were founding um, uh, actual projects on the basis of modernist uh, Cartesian city principles. I myself, I've uh, written Master Planning Futures, which shows the way, uh, ways in which practitioners are evolving their practices towards frameworks, adaptive frameworks, uh, responding to real life problems and challenges. And I've also uh, edited this year an issue of AD magazine called 4D Hyperlocal, which features an essay by Claudia Pasquero and her partner, Marco Paletto, co-founders of Ecologic Studio. Marco Paletta will be speaking uh, as a sec second speaker. So, um, ten years, I was trying to give a little bit of a historical uh, slant on this, and I um, looked up a paper by some scientists at Yale University the other day on the Anthropocene. And they made the point that it was only recently, this was, what, 2006 or seven, have Anthropocene drivers become major factors at the planetary level. Human action, they, they said, is a critical force in a range of biophysical systems, which then in turn exert a powerful influence on humans and their social systems. And this is necessarily an interactive relationship. 
and efforts to understand basic properties and processes of natural systems without regard to anthropogenic drivers are, they observed, increasingly of limited use. But also the management of human systems uh, without regard for the role of underlying biophysical systems cannot succeed in the long run. This was a decade ago. Now, Scientists, as I recall, were not immediately rushing off to, to train and become architects. But I do think that in, in spite of uh, what was happening now, very fashionable, um, para, uh, uh, the whole sort of para, uh, um, the whole world of propagated by figures like Patrick Schumacher and so on, Pat, um, para, paracentric um, view of work. Um, it, it really is um, a question that is architecture capable of being um, an interactive science of human biophysical systems? Um, and so the questions that Claudia formulated for, par parametric was the word I was grasping for. <laughs> um, so Claudia um, uh, formulated a number of questions which I propose that we, we line up and actually put forward to the speakers and to you uh, in, the, in the round table. So how can we design cities and urban spaces in ways that build their resilience and adaptability in the face of stresses, shocks and changes? inflicted on them and taking place. I mean, Rahul said to me, um, we, don't, we don't have big problems with air pollution, unlike London, my home city. We, we don't so much have the crisis of affordable housing that you have. Um, but, you know, the prevalence of urban flooding and uh, so many other uh, evidence of, of shock, shocks uh, within the system are increasingly, uh, uh, increasingly worrying. Secondly, how can we give greater attention to architecture as an art of processes? So creating tools, not generic tools, but tools that are very specific, like bio-aggregators. And, and we hope that the exhibition will illuminate what the significance of a bio-aggregator is, is, in fact. Um, as means to sense and to register and to influence daily life and uh, um, and unfolding processes taking place in cities across the planet. Um, the, the ways in which we change the way we live um, in our ever-present artificial spaces. So then how also can the actual materials of architecture foster interaction between different social, environmental, architectural and infra infrastructural systems? This is relational urbanism. Um, and transcending the silo thinking that defined urban design in the past, de defined the, the more Cartesian, um, uh, morphological way of looking at the city. So putting now a focus on interdependent roles of biology, computation and architecture, what kind of frameworks, um, material and um, operational, can architecture create to deal with change and transformational? And this is... As I say, it's a relational model. It's also one that puts a great focus on the resources of cities uh, the, and, and uh, metabolic processes. Um, this is one in which clearly, from, if judging by the, the quality of the exhibition, one in which uh, academia is, is taking a real lead. The one question is, what can happen next? How much further can that that go? Can it go? Can the the, the whole movement go beyond academia? Uh, also, then finally, another question I think is um, in drawing out the potentials of land and our resources in cities. Instead of imposing solutions, um, should there not be an argument for saying having a permanent, ongoing, prototypical site in a city? Um, with, as Claudia mentioned this morning, ongoing activities by machines and a, a site that you can visit, which would have huge value in terms of live education for, for people of all ages. So I'll leave those questions in the air and um, with great pleasure introduce our first speaker, 
um, Bart Lotzma. He's the professor and head of the Institute for Architectural Theory and History at the University of Innsbruck. And I think it was about 18 years ago that I moderated a panel at Reba in London on, on Rotterdam with him, which was very thought-provoking, because he is that polycephalum person. He's a historian, theoretician, critic, curator in the fields of architecture, art, and, and design. Um, now, he's not going to talk about what we have on the program. Instead, he's going to, to discuss a fascinating project that was the subject of the Montenegro Pavilion at the last Venice uh, Biennale that Claudia and Marco Paletto, who's coming up next after Bart, will, uh, were deeply involved with. So we, um, we look forward to hearing more about um, Ul Ulcinch, I think it's a uh, call, cool. I can't pronounce it, but um, I'll leave this to the expert and he'll tell you more about it. Thank you, Bart. <laughs> 